Welcome to our UX design crash course on spatial design that will teach you the foundations of designing apps for the Apple Vision Pro. This entire free course is designed to upskill you so that in the next few months you are prepared to apply the best internships and jobs in the field of UX design. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. All right, this is episode number three from our free crash course on the principles of spatial design, where we will learn how the Apple Vision Pro works and as UX designers, how can we make some very, very cool apps for it when the gadget finally launches. So because this is episode number three, in the first module, I just want to do a quick recap of episode number two so that everybody is on the same page. In module number two, we'll understand the second principle of spatial design, which is about designing human centered experiences. We'll understand what does that even mean and how do you implement this when you're designing apps for the Vision Pro. And then in the very last module, I will share some free resources and roadmaps with articles and references that you can use to implement this advice in your own Figma files. Let's start with module number one, all the recap of episode number two. See, we understood how is spatial design different from mobile design because all of us have been learning how to make apps for the iPhone, the iPad or computers. But in this case, we have introduced a new access, which is the Z access, whereas people can bring windows closer to them and they can push content away from them. Apart from that, there's also spatial audio. It's not just about what you see in front of you. It is also about what you hear from different directions. So that also also plays a huge huge role in the entire experience design of the Vision Pro and then at the very end we understood that there are new categories of inputs that they have launched in the Vision Pro so it's not just about touching and dragging it's also about looking and staring and there's voice you can also use keyboard you can also use game controller so a lot of interesting stuff is there so of course we had picked up some practical examples we understood how the home screen would look like how we are focusing more on landscape content and not vertical content because for our neck it is easy to go from left to right but not that comfortable to go from top to bottom and we covered some basic basic comparisons on how a mac app like apple music would be converted into a vision pro app just to point out some very strong differences, here we had opaque interfaces whereas here we have the glass material and within the glass material we had this thing called as vibrancy which basically means that if I were to see this window in a dark room all the text and all the icons glow up. The contrast is automatically adjusted according to what we see. Then we had a quick overview of all the input categories uh, where you can tap something with your fingers, you can type into the flying keyboards, everything has to be within your field of view. So this is just to make sure that if you're coming on this channel for the very first time, we'll just do a quick revision of what we did in episode number two. Now in module number two, we'll understand the second principle. There are five principles of spatial design. Today we'll understand the second principle, which is around designing human centered experiences. Basically, if I were to put it in very simple words, a lot of people when they're designing, they actually forget what is the easiest thing for a human. They often get very excited about all the problems that they are seeing all the solutions that are coming to them naturally without reminding themselves about the fact that in the end this is going to be used by a normal human being and that normal human being is probably not like you this generic human being would have a certain set of assumptions and this human being would usually not know how your application would work so from a very problem solving perspective anytime you're solving a problem anytime you're curating an experience you need to make sure that you visualize a human being using this and then you keep asking yourself would a human being feel comfortable even using the solution that I have created, right? So Harvard Business School actually has a very interesting blog article uh, which talks about human-centered design and it starts with this very interesting line. It says one of the primary reasons startups fail is a lack of market need or in more straightforward terms, the founders build a product or service no one wants, which is very strange if you look about it. If you really think about it, why would a founder spend so much time and money in building something that is not even required. The thing is when you're solving a problem, you're often detached from the real world because you're so busy working hard, figuring out the solution, figuring out how you can do this in the best way. And a lot of problem solvers often forget that in the end, it is going to be a normal customer who's going to come and use your solution. So it's very, very important to balance out your internal hustle with also exposure to real human beings who are about to be your potential customers. Now, how do we make Vision Pro designs more human centric? The thing is they have built up a sense of guidelines. 
you will actually save a lot of time if you were to follow these guidelines in your apps as well. Most importantly, you need to understand that when you are looking at something, the easiest form of input or giving feedback to Vision Pro is going to be through our eyes. For me, it's going to be rank number one is going to be eyes. Rank number two is going to be my mouth, which is my speech. And then rank number three is probably going to be my fingers where I would tap on something. But I would always feel more comfortable if I could just communicate with my eyes without doing any movement because I am very lazy and I'm pretty sure you would also relate to it. So a very basic guideline is that there is always a field of view. So imagine that this is your camera view. You open your Vision Pro, you're wearing it. Even though you can see everything in this video right now, you're watching this on YouTube, you're probably on your laptop. Your field of view is like a small circle around the laptop, but you know that you can see a lot of area even outside the laptop as well. It is in your perception, but you're not focusing on it. So always make sure that whatever content it is that you're putting, it is in between this field of view. So it is easiest to see things in the center. So place the most important content there and the field of view is wide so always prefer landscape layouts we've already discussed this so the given example of safari right here so in safari you can notice that this is my main window this is my window bar which allows me to move and close this window and then on the top you have your navigation menu which is actually separated right so if i were to look at all of these things i will be able to select them but notice how in the beginning of the app they're not putting it on the left they're not putting it on the right they're not putting on the center all the main content is in the central field of view now, a very important thing here is to note that even if you're extending the layout, you should always make sure that you match that extension with the field of view. Now, I'll tell you what this means. You have around six tabs, not around. You literally have just six tabs opened up here, right? So this is Safari again. Notice one very subtle difference. The central tabs right here, they are aligned properly. But these tabs at the edge, they are slightly aligned in the center. Why do you need that? Because I am essentially reducing using the width of the coverage area. So maybe if I were to keep them all in flat, I would touch till here. But now that I have curved them and I have pushed them, I have essentially decreased the width and I'm bringing them closer within my field of view. So this is very, very interesting because if you were to tilt the tabs on the inward sides, they would become easier to read, which is very, very cool. Second component is around ergonomics. So as soon as you open an app, the Vision Pro would predict the natural line of sight. And all of these windows are placed in alignment with this dotted line. So imagine if you're sitting like this, they would calculate where your line of sight would be and the center of your video would cross like this. But if you were on the couch, you would not be sitting and looking right in the front, right? Because you're on the couch, your neck is slightly at the back, then you would obviously prefer content which is here and not here, right? So it's not necessary to place your windows in the center of the room. It is actually dependent on your line of sight. And you know, even when I'm talking about these things, you would feel that these are pretty obvious, but I'm telling you as a designer, sometimes we often forget these very, very basic things as well. Another very important guideline is to place the content a bit further than arm's reach. So if I were to use my arm like this, right, and you can't see it, but if I were to use Use it like this the screen should be ahead of my arm okay because i essentially need to give feedback now if i were to stretch my arm like this and if the screen would just hit at this point it would be very annoying for me like i don't want to pass through the screen right like i want my hands to be in the center i want my hands to be visible when i'm interacting with these objects so it can track my hands so i want these things to be away from me so the basic uh, guideline is to keep them away from the one arm reach as well so this is the circumference of that area if i were to put this hand right here and avoid placing content behind people or extremely high or low unless it's part of an immersive experience. So this immersive experience is the entire VR experience. In that case, you can still put it, you know, something is coming from the back just to make it more immersive. But when it is about a single window, when it is about a pass-through mode, so we, we actually understood about the pass-through and the fully immersive mode in episode number one. If you haven't checked that out, please make sure that you watch these videos in order. Next guideline is that not everyone will be seated in a way where they can move around to use your app. So you need to avoid anchoring content to people's view. Let me explain this to you by picking two cases. Case number one, I open the Vision Pro, a window pops up and no matter where I look, the window follows my eyes. So if this is my window, anywhere I look, it is just following me like this and like I can't escape, right? So it gets very annoying, right? So it makes you feel stuck and it can be disorienting, right? So you should not anchor it to the eyes. In fact, you should anchor it 
it in people's space. So if I am opening up a window in my Vision Pro, I can see that this window is on top of my desk. Even if I look on the right, the window should still float on my desk. So it almost becomes like a real life object, right? So this is how it works. This is case number one. I am looking in the front. This is case number one. This is case number two. I'm looking in the front. So it is right here. But if I look right, it is moving with me. This is very annoying. Okay. But the right use case could be that I am looking in the front. This is here. If I'm looking on the left, it stays there itself. So it becomes a part of my living room, right? Now we come to the third aspect, which is movement. Now the thing is people can always get up and walk around. We recommend creating stationary experiences that require minimal movement. Obviously, you don't want people to stand up and press a button. People should be able to use your app without needing to move at all. So you need to prioritize this, right? So when you have a thing like Keynote or when you have something like Safari, all of these interactions should be possible without that person moving, right? Now, sometimes people do move to a new seat in their room to face a different direction. They can press and hold the digital crown to recenter. So so just to make a quick correction, I think in the beginning of this video, I said you need to tap it three times. But here is the important correction. Huge apologies. You need to press and hold the digital crown to recenter. I'll ask my editor to make sure he puts an asterisk when I make this mistake as well. Uh, but basically, let's just say that if my original point of view was here, if I move to a new spot, if I hold the digital crown, it would essentially readjust to my new position. So with that, we finished module number two. We understood what is human centered design. We understood understood the role of ergonomics as well and we understood some basics of movement within Vision Pro and some important guidelines that you have to make sure that it is further than one arm distance away from you. You need to make sure that you have minimal movement when you're creating these experiences. And now if we were to connect the dots with what we learned in episode number one and episode number two where we were talking about familiar experiences then a lot of things would be now making sense to you right now it is very very interesting as to where we are moving with this in module number three I am just reiterating and resharing the resources that I shared. The resources from module 3 remain the same from the previous episodes. So I've put them in the PDF itself. You can download the entire presentation PDF from the link in description for free. Make sure you click on subscribe and hit the bell icon because we will be launching new episodes on UX and spatial design very soon. I hope that you're taking care of your mind and body. This is your dost Ansh Mehra signing out. If you like this video, make sure you click on like and hit the subscribe button. I regularly upload videos on UX design, marketing and storytelling.